Hey guys, I hope you're doing all right. Um, just a quick explanation before I start this video. So, Dark Histories is actually more of a podcast on iTunes, and you know, it's got an RSS feed, and it comes down on, you know, iTunes, Google Play, any kind of, I don't know, what they call them podcatcher um, that people use. So normally, you know, it's just a audio only kind of program, and it goes on for about an hour. Um, and I, I post to YouTube just the narrated part of the videos. But with this Anatoly Moskvin, I thought maybe it's kind of worth chucking up the other half of the podcast. Because, I mean, the other half of the podcast is literally just me talking to myself. But, you know, I thought it's kind of an interesting one this week. So, yeah, I thought I'd post it up. Um, but, yeah, just wanted to kind of introduce it a little bit and give a bit of explanation. Because if you weren't aware that, you know, this was kind of the other half of what I do every two weeks, it might come, seem a bit strange. Um, but yeah, so this is the kind of, I guess, part B, like the second part. The so podcast structures like introduction, narration, oh fuck, I hit my microphone, introduction, narration, and then this kind of chat part. So this is the kind of chat part of the podcast. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm just talking rubbish. If you'd like me to post this part of the podcast more to YouTube, let me know. So you can subscribe to the podcast as well. The links are always in the description of the videos. But I know, I mean, I, I rarely look at descriptions and videos unless I'm looking for timestamps. So I'm sure people have missed them. But yeah, if you'd like me to post the, this part of the podcast more often, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments and, and I can do that. Um, yeah, anyway, this is, yeah, the second half of Anatoly Moskvin. I just thought it was worth posting because it was it's pretty challenging material this week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Tricky one. Possibly the most challenging, I think, that I've dealt with since starting the podcast. So I, I was going to write it way back in season one. And I started and just threw in the towel, really. And I just thought this is maybe... I don't know, at the time, it wasn't. It was feeling a bit too dark. But I, I feel like I probably only scratched the surface. But I'm really glad I did get around to covering it. At first, I was sort of going through like, oh, you know, what can I do? You know, we're coming into Halloween. What sort of really creepy stories can I do? And obviously, this one sort of popped out because it's... I mean, you have ghosts and stuff. And that's creepy, but then you have people that are just, you know, mummify children and make them into dolls. That's really creepy. So obviously I kind of thought that would be a good idea, but then I sort of obviously started researching it and you actually realise that there's a whole lot, you know, the case is a lot deeper than that. And and actually, you know, you, you start sort of learning about his psych, kind of psyche and, and you realise that actually it's much more challenging than that. So you have to say that at the very, very least, he was severely misguided. And what he did was very, very wrong. But somehow I feel like my conclusion is not as cut and dry as that. Like it's, it's too easy to call him a freak and write him off as a psycho. But the reality is it's, it's much more nuanced. He was just really, really unwell and failed to be given any of the help that he clearly needed I wondered about the stories of him as a child I wondered how much the f story of the kissing the girl's forehead being forced to kiss the girl's forehead I wondered if that was true I mean, I can see it being true I suppose I don't think there's anything too wrong with it I think possibly it was it was true but it's it's mad isn't it and, and the thing is uh, the thing that makes me doubt it was just that it seemed to sort of go along with a lot of his kind of occult delusions, I guess you could say. But, you know, there's no reason to doubt it. And, and you know, that that's going to have... Well, it did sort of go a long way in, in messing him up. So, you know, he obviously had that difficult upbringing. And he's obviously, you know, a genius. And, and you know, there are times when you see these people that are clear geniuses and they suffer in other ways. And, and obviously... He, would, he obviously had suffered a lot with mental illness and that's difficult, especially when you're not given the help that you need. And, and that, I think that's the case with him. You know, in, in terms of what he actually done, 
it's it's undeniable that he upset families and it's a pretty terrible thing to have done and it must have been really hard for them to deal with but he didn't really have any malicious intent and that's partly why I wanted to sort of cover this in the first place was because I, I read a lot of stuff online about him years ago and obviously all the English speaking sort of blogs you tend to find that with cases that are not from English speaking countries people tend to fill in gaps when they cover it in English and by doing so they those gaps that they filled in themselves become fact when they're not and the thing that sort of drew me to this case was when when I first found out that um, he wasn't actually a necrophiliac so a lot of people were saying that he was a necrophiliac and all this when actually none of that's true but it's it's often repeated in fact I think probably almost everything that you see on crappy YouTube videos and stuff will call him that and I think they're just going for shock value I mean that's sad on two levels for me like firstly you shouldn't have this case is shocking enough without adding to it you know and secondly it's sort of demonizing mental illness in a way I think I think it's it's too easy it's like I say it's too easy to say oh he's a psychopath and a necrophiliac derp like when actually the reality is much 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 more challenging you we have to have a level of compassion really for the fact that he was very ill and didn't get any help and in the end of the day as bad as it was what he was doing as far as he was concerned he was doing things correct one of the interesting things was that he didn't want to hurt the families and he knew that what he was doing was going to hurt the families so he knew that what he was doing was wrong himself but he tried to make it so they'd never know and you can say that he was just trying to cover his own back but I think you can also say that I, like he just didn't want to hurt anyone from doing what he was doing, which shows either a level of compulsion or just, um, you know, like a degree of a lack of self-control or something maybe. So he's just trying to sort of minimise problems that he was causing. It's It's complicated as hell, really, I think. Like my feelings when I finished this was so complicated because on one hand... You read certain parts of it and you just want to say, well, yeah, he was, you know, a psycho and just accept that, whoa, you know, what he was doing was crazy. And and they're the kind of parts of the story which are really creepy and interesting. And I suppose from like, a, you know, this is going to sound awful, but from like an entertainment perspective or perhaps not entertainment, but but from a perspective of like that kind of macabre sort of darkness that sort of draws you in. You know, it's easy. You can you can sort of just sit sit on that part of the story and say, yeah, absolute madness. But you have to kind of really, no matter what, you kind of have to address the fact that, you know, why was he doing this? And when you start sort of getting into that, I think you start kind of then it changes it to something a little more, and a little certainly a lot more complicated, and definitely a lot more tragic. I found it interesting that his, that his parents don't want to actually don't actually want him to be released. That they said, you know, basically, just leave him in there. That that, that I find that that must have been a hard decision. I know they suffered a lot since him getting arrested. They've had um, like threats, and their house gets raided constantly by investigators, and they can't sell their house because people don't want to be associated with it. And people don't want to be associated with them. So they don't really have any friends. Even their families kind of shun them. So I know they've had to really suffer a lot for it. And I know this is is what's really interesting is the way I sort of feel about it is echoed across Russia, really. And when you read a lot of what people think about it, that's obviously quite split as well. And I saw a lot of comments on newspaper reports. And some of them sort of, say you know he should be released he's not doing anything worse than the government do every day and things like this which is quite interesting and there are others that just sort of straight up call him a pervert and leave it at that it's obviously really polarizing but i think deep down we've got to recognize these that these people are humans and when 
you come across someone like Muskvin who did bad things but without really any intent and not you can't say he didn't hurt anyone because of the families he didn't intend to maliciously go about his ways like I say you've got to sort of treat these people like humans and think of them as humans and, and, and question why he's doing what he's doing and it, and it all came down to for him that partly I think he was just really lonely partly I mean obviously overriding all of this was his mental health problems but throughout that he just was lonely he wanted children and he felt bad for these children who he saw as you know having their life ended too quickly because they all died unnatural deaths so you know for him he saw all of their lives had ended too quickly and he wanted to help them you know that was as far as he was concerned he was trying to do good obviously misguided you know you have to say he's obviously a hundred percent misguided in that but yeah complicated feelings about this one in interesting story though at the end of the day you have to sort of accept that he he obviously did things which are very very wrong in the eyes of everyone so you wouldn't even say most people i mean what he was doing was wrong and you know when you look at it say from a shadow level my lord was it wrong i mean it was dark and messed up as hell but you know at the same time i there's quite a large part of me that just sort of feels sorry for him really i think obviously i'm well and didn't get any of the help that he he needed so yeah that's more or less where i'm going to leave that because it's it's not a mystery i definitely like to hear your opinions i worry a bit that it's going to be polarizing and people are going to listen to me talking then and think i'm a nutcase but that's fine you know i'd love to hear your opinions i you know let me know what you think on that note you can get in touch with me contact at darkhistories.com and we've got some emails right now so let's do them let's bring it up a bit so i've got a first email from nate he says hey i love your podcast i think you do a great job framing historical incidents in a judicious and informed manner any chance you do an episode on joan rish or rice not sure how to pronounce that yet um all right nate i've never heard of joan rish until you emailed me and i looked it up and i loved it and it's definitely something that I'm going to be looking into doing. Yeah, I really enjoyed sort of looking it up. It seems like it would fit the podcast absolutely. So yeah, yeah, definitely going to be doing that in the future. Got another one from Daniel, and he says, "Hey Ben, just a quick note to say that I love the podcast generally, and especially enjoyed this most recent episode about Nellie Butler. Your analysis of the incident reminded me in many ways of my own favourite historical ghost story, the Reverend John Ruddle's 1665 account of the ghost of Dorothy Dingle." Right. Daniel, that's a great name for a start. How can I not be interested? Uh, he says, here again, we see a ghost story which predates not only the spiritualist movement, but many of our long-standing ghost story conventions. The result is at once holy, holy, the result is at once wholly strange and, as far as I'm concerned, entirely delightful. Anyway, I've been meaning to write for some months to express my appreciation for the podcast and your reasonable, thoroughly researched approach to true crime and the supernatural alike. And this recent episode gave me the perfect excuse. Thanks so much for that, Daniel. Um, and you get Daniel included a couple of links in that, which which I'm definitely enjoying working through on my lunch breaks at the moment. So some of them are quite long, but they they're really great. And yeah, I'd I'd be looking into that ghost of Dorothy Dingle as well because John Ruddle and Dorothy Dingle just sound like fantastic names to me. Anything from 1665 with a ghost of Dorothy Dingle, I mean, I'm all over that. And uh, the last email was from James, and he said, really like the podcast. I discovered it on Reddit's weekly Submit Your Podcast thread on our podcasts. I was also posting a podcast on there. So I only discovered Dark Histories a couple of days ago, but I'm sure I'll get through both seasons in the next week. My podcast focuses on similar subject matter, and it's called uh, Midnight Tales. Do you have any advice in regards to promotion for a total noob? Cheers and keep up the good work, James. James? I've got absolutely no idea how to promote anything. I'm absolutely shocking at promotion for Dark Histories. The only places I do, so this is sort of an answer for everyone, the only places I promote are our podcasts pretty much, and which is Reddit. 
and podcasts we listen to, which is a group on Facebook. Um, they said they're probably the only two places I really promote other than sort of Twitter. But I mean, I do that sporadically and I'm really bad at promotion in general. But for everyone, those places are podcasts and podcasts we listen to on Facebook. They're both really good places to not only promote a podcast, but find new podcasts if you sort of want to find new stuff. So I recommend that to everyone, really, um, to get involved on those places. Yeah, so I'd say, so obviously you've got our podcast covered because that's where you found me, James. But, you know, I'll give your podcast a quick shout out. It's, uh, it's called Midnight Tales. So there you go. You're already better at the promotion than me because you've reached out to other podcasts and networking, which is something I don't really do. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just because after making everything, like researching, writing, editing, all the other guff you have to goes along with it, my promotion lacks. So, yeah. Um, but cheers for your email, James. And yeah, Midnight Tales, that's that. If you're interested in getting in touch, send me an email, say especially about this episode. I'd be really interested in hearing what you think. Um, you can either just throw me an email at contact at darkhistories.com or you can visit darkhistories.com and you'll find the links to an email there as well as links to Discord, which you can come on and actually chat. There's also links to all of our social stuff. Next week on the 28th, we're doing a third live stream event now. Let's call it an event. It's more like it's just a live stream. We talk about the episodes and just have a chat. Last time went on for about three hours. That's on YouTube. You can get involved. Um, I post all the links for that on social media as we sort of approach it, get a bit closer to it. Um, You can get involved with the live stream as it's happening, sort of interact as it happens either through the YouTube chat or if you come on our Discord, you can actually like get a space on the actual stream and come and have a chat. And it's, it's good fun. So the next one of that's going to take place on the Friday the 28th at 9pm EST. That'll be on YouTube and I'll post links on all our social stuff for that. Other than that, if you want to support patreon.com forward slash dark histories, you get early access, bonus episodes, access to archives of stuff, um, which is not much, but it's building up. Stickers, postcards, things like that. And um, help support the show, and that's wicked. So yeah, if you want to do that, patreon.com forward slash darkhistories, or just go to darkhistories.com. You'll find links for everything there. So yeah, that's pretty much the episode this week. I will... See you all either next week at the live stream or in a couple of weeks. I hope until then you have a fantastic run up to Halloween. We'll be doing a Halloween special episode, so look forward to that. And yeah, I'll see you all soon. Get in touch with me if you'd like to speak to me about Muskvin. Cheers. And for the first time, I'm probably going to say, if you've listened to this before bed, best of luck with getting to sleep. Sleep tight.